Okay, how's it going everybody? I hope you're all doing well. Okay, well, so in this episode, I thought I'd try to say something about, uh, about Plato's view on artistic creation. Something that mostly comes from his, uh, his little dialogue called Ion. Okay, so uh, what does he argue there? Well, what he makes Socrates say in that dialogue is that art is, well, that it's a, um, it's a product of divine inspiration. In other words, when, uh, say, a poet speaks or recites his or her stuff, or when a musician creates or sings a song, what's going on is that they're really having a god or a spirit speak through them. And they're just uh, something like the vessel or the medium through which it happens. So they're sort of uh, in the grips of being possessed, you could say. Now, what's really important here is that because they're in this condition, they're mostly out of their senses, and so their mind is no longer involved. That's important because, as Socrates argues, it shows that artists don't really have all that much skill, nor do they really know that much about what it is that they're talking about or what it is that they've created. They're no experts. No. The whole thing, the entire process of creation, is due to a power outside of their own doing and control. The whole thing comes from a source that's, uh, that's non-intellectual or uh, irrational. Now, um, here's the thing. As it turns out, Socrates is actually criticizing the poets and the artists in saying these things. I mean, he's basically saying that artists, because they don't know anything, can't teach us much. That they can't impart any knowledge or, or truths, moral truths included that they just don't have the, um, the, the expertise that they think they do. In fact, uh, not surprisingly, of course, he thinks that only philosophy can teach us these things because only it, unlike art, is built upon rationality and intelligence, upon uh, logos. Okay, now, I think that uh, probably Socrates is open to challenge here when it comes to his claim that the artist has no expertise and so can't communicate or teach uh, certain truths. But that aside, let me just focus on his point about inspiration because it's, uh, it's fascinating. That's to say, what's interesting to me is this idea that, uh, that artistic inspiration comes from outside of one's conscious self. I mean, there are all sorts of examples here. One example that, that comes to my mind is the, uh, is the Italian film director Fellini, who famously got many of his ideas for his film Eight and a Half from his dreams. And then there's, uh, there's Paul McCartney, who first heard the song yesterday in his dream before actually going on to produce it. But you know where uh, else this sort of thing is particularly apt? This idea of uh, unconscious inspiration. Well, this might sound uh, a little bit odd, but I think it's particularly apt when it comes to certain exceptional athletes. Athletes who seem to elevate their performance to the level of art, say. What I mean is that I think that part of what makes certain rare athletes exceptional or maybe even geniuses is precisely the fact that they're a medium of sorts. Or to put it another way, maybe, that they don't experience themselves as the source of their actions. In other words, to be exceptional on the ice or, uh, or on the pitch or, or on the tennis court is to some extent to leave the domain of thought and to allow yourself to be carried along by the flow. It's to let movement flow through you. It's to be at one with your surroundings and uh, to be unhesitating. Simply put, it's to get out of your own way. In other words, it's the opposite of uh, trying to aggressively manifest yourself. It's the opposite of a uh, willful self-assertion. Now, of course, there are so many athletes who just take this aggressive and willful approach, and I'm not denying that it's, uh, it's not effective. Of course it is. But the thing is, it's fairly 
commonplace. And it's not transcendent. No, the real transcendence is the Wayne Gretzky who waited for the puck to come to him. Or uh, Zinedine Zidane who played like I imagine Lao Tzu danced. Or the ever graceful Roger Federer whom David Foster Wallace thought exempt from physical laws. If there is anything like a genius in sports, then that title belongs to athletes like this, to those artists to whom the gods speak through. Bye for now.